name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one true God. Glory be to him and may his grace and mercy be upon us forever. Amen. Good morning, good evening, shlomo, namaskaram. Happy New Year to all our followers, well-wishers and viewers. May God bless you abundantly during the, this year 2024. Welcome all of you to another live session from Urho The Way. Today we turn our focus to Morphylaxinos of Mabug, uh, our dear father among the saints whose 1500th Dukrono or remembrance we celebrated last month. So last year was the 1500th year since his passing away in AD 523. And the patriarch of the Syriac Orthodox Church, uh, His Holiness uh, Ignatius Afrem II, he declared that uh, 2023 would be the year when we focus on Morphylaxinos, his writings, his impact on Christianity uh, as a whole. And as part of that, we are organizing uh, lecture series like this, this one. Uh, so Morphylaxinos, he lived during the 5th and 6th centuries AD. He was a strong defender of the Miaphysite Christology and vigorously opposed the Christological formula put forward at the Council of Chalcedon in AD 451, alongside St. Severus of Antioch. Um, he was a prolific writer in Syriac, and he has many uh, exegetical, dogmatic, and ascetic works to his name. And after being exiled uh, for not accepting the Chalcedonian definition, he passed away in AD 523. His most famous work is called uh, the Discourses, uh, which is uh, an exploration of the spiritual life. And uh, it might be uh, more oriented towards monks uh, when he was writing it, but it's also for popular reading. And uh, we have a new translation that was done recently by Dr. Robert Kitchen. And Dr. Kitchen was on Urho the way uh, a few years ago, and he did three lectures um, on various topics related to that work. Uh, and we have uh, it available on our uh, YouTube channel. It's a playlist called uh, More Philoxenos of my book. So please check that out. Um, and today we have with us our esteemed guest, uh, Father Dr. Uh, Sharbel Iskander Bishairi. Uh, whom we had with us also in 2022 to talk about Syriac manuscript fragments found at Chicago University. Uh, so a little about Father Sharbel. Uh, he is the metadata editor at ATLA. He holds a PhD in church history from the Pontifical Oriental Institute in Rome and another PhD in World Christianity and Global Missions, Christian Muslim Studies from the Lutheran School of Theology in Chicago. He has published a collection of books uh, such as An Early Christian Reaction to Islam, uh, Isu Yab the Third and the Muslim Arabs in 2019, and Hagiography, History and Manuscript Culture, Studies in Syriac Christianity in 2018. And Father Sharbel has also published numerous articles on the history of Syriac Christianity and cataloged several collections of Syriac and Arabic manuscripts. He is a pioneer in studying and publishing an extensive collection of historical registers of church records, such as records of ecclesiastic ordinations, endowments, sacred places, and patriarchal annual dues. Um, and these are topics which are not focused a lot um, in, in scholarship. And it, uh, it's surprising how much can be learned from such documents. His current projects include surveying and mapping Syriac settlements and sacred places in Southeast Turkey, uh, which includes Turabdin, uh, which is the focus of today's uh, lecture. Father Sharbel is also a Syriac Orthodox priest who has served the St. Afrem Syriac Orthodox Church in Chicago for 18 years. And he has five, uh, five children, uh, three sons and two daughters. So. Let us all welcome Father Sh Dr. Sharbel Iskander Bakheri, Bakheri, sorry, Barakmur Abuna. Welcome. Should un unmute yourself, Abuna. 
Thank you very much, Marion, for your introduction and your kind words. And uh, thank you for your effort in organizing these sessions and all the team of Orson. And first of all, Happy New Year to everybody attending with us. And we wish this new year peace everywhere. Regarding our topic today, only one month ago, we celebrated the 1500th anniversary of the death of Felixinos of Mabur, a prominent Syriac theologian of the 5th, 6th century. While his theological and aesthetic writings are usually highlighted, his place in the context of popular piety does not receive due attention. Therefore, I thought it's proper to highlight this aspect of this life, especially in the Torabdin region. Among the sources that mention the life and deeds of Felixinus of Mabur, there is a Syriac homily composed probably in the 13th century by an anonymous author who stresses a special relationship between Felixinus and Torabdin. Now, this presentation aims to understand the historical background of this homily, how the image of Felixinus was employed in the life of the community in Torabdin, the importance of his relics, sacred places dedicated to him, peace days in honor of his name, and his place in local folk stories. However, I would first like to introduce very briefly Felixinus of Mabur and the geographical region of Tur Abdin. Felixinus, known in Syriac circles as Achesnoyo, meaning the stranger, as a translation of his Greek name, was a prominent Syriac writer and theologian from the 5th, 6th century. He is well known as a devoted adversary of the Christological doctrine laid down at the Council of Chalcedon 451. He was born in the Persian Empire in Beth Garmai, a historical region around Kirkuk in northern Iraq. He studied at the famous theological school in Edessa called the Persian School. Felixinus refused the Antiochian theological tradition and followed the Alexandrian tradition of Cyril, of Alexandria. He became a leading figure in ecclesiastical circles in Syria, and in 485, he was appointed bishop of Mabuk. Among his many activities as bishop, he sponsored revising the Syriac translation of the New Testament bringing it closer to the Greek text. After the death of Emperor Anastasius in 518, his successor, Emperor Justin I, supported the Chalcedonians and expelled the non-Chalcedonian bishops from their sees. Philoxenus was deposed and exiled, and he died five years later in Paphalognia in 523. Now, regarding Turabdin, Turabdin is a plateau that stretches north from the Tigris River until the plain of Nisibin, south and west from Mediat, Istil, to the valley called Valley Johanna. The name Turabdin is of Syriac Aramaic origin, which means Mountain of the Servants. According to Barsan, this term refers to the ascetics who inhabited the area since the 4th century. The churches, convents, monastery, and ruins of this area show the strength of Christianity during previous centuries. Turabdin fell under the dominion of the Byzantines, Persians, Muslim Arabs, Umayyad, Abbasid, Seljuk, Turkoman, Mamluks, and Persians. The Ottoman Turk came to dominate the region in the early 16th century. 
and the Syriac Christian community survived, although in reduced form, under the Ottoman Sultanate. Besides the Syriac Christian presence in Turabdin, many Kurdish clans dwelled in the area, and their presence gradually grew, especially after the 16th century. Among the sources about the life and deeds of Felixinos of Mabuk, is a memoir or Seems like we lost Father Bashiri. Let me see if I can get him back. Uh, the election, we have a snowstorm in Chicago, and maybe this is affecting the. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. I, 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 will, I, will, I will share. You know, I. Uh, okay. I will. Do you remember when we finished, when the things were cut? Uh, can you talk about this document again? The oh, we, 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 yeah, we finished. Yeah, we finished the part about Turabdin. Yeah. Okay. Homily on Felixinos of Mabur. Among the sources about the life and deeds of Felixinos of Mabur, there is a memoir or homily composed in twelve-syllable meter that was published by André de Halo in his Elie de Cartamain, Memra sur Mar Felixinos de Mabouk, published in 1963. This memoir is in a Syriac manuscript preserved in Paris Bibliothèque Nationale. Now, Alphonse Mengana also presented an English translation of a short version of this memoir in 1920. Mingana mentioned that he based his translation on a modern transcript, transcript of a 14th century manuscript in Bessabrino, shown to him by the future patriarch Afram Barson. However, I believe it was not 14th century, but 18th century. Another similar text, Harvard Syriac 38, was edited by Sebastian Brock, in his Tashrith Odmor Achesnoyo, published in Kolo Suryoyo in 1996. Who is the author of this memoir on Felixinos of Mabuch? We don't know the name of the author of this homily. André de Halleux assumed the name of Eli, Elijah as the composer of the homily based on a sentence in the memoir Afis Moruch Na'bed Rahme Al Hatoya Wamle Mume Elip Sharbuch Alohoyo in English addressing Felixinos beseech your Lord to have mercy on sinners and supplicate to the faults that Eli Elijah committed in your divine history. Now, based on the halo, now we have the name of, supposedly the name of this author, Elijah of Kartamin, which became part of Syriac literature author. 
this is an example where you can find about him. However, I believe that the reading of Andre de Hallo was wrong. And we have to read the text according to the following. Afis morg na'bad rahmi al hatoye wamle mume dal i karboch al hoyo. Here. Afis morg na'bad rahmi al hatoye wamle mume dal i karboch al hoyo. In English, addressing Felixinos, beseech your Lord to have mercy on sinners and on the one means on the author he's speaking about himself the author who is full of faults but he made effort to compose your story in other words we don't have the name of the author the author did not mention his name we don't have someone called elijah of Kartamin. in other words the author of this Memro Anonymous. And in another copy, we can see, which is found in the Monastery of Mar Gabriel, we can see in different manuscript, different copy, Wamle Mume Dal I Sharboch Alohoyo, which means the one who is full of faults but he made the effort he was tired to compose your story you know doesn't have anything to do with elijah of Kartamin. therefore we don't have someone called elijah of Kartamin. now the confusion into which andre de halio fell through his inaccurate reading of the syriac text led to an incorrect and unproven identification of the name of the author of this sermon but it is most likely that the author was a monk affiliated with the monastery of Kartamin, Mor Gabriel, located near Mediat in Mardin province. It is possible that he was the abbot or bishop of the monastery and from the village of Betsabrino, a village in Tor Abdin, not so far from the monastery of Mor Gabriel. This assumption is based on his emphasis on this village as a key place in Felixino's life. It is essential to mention that most of the abbots and monks of the monastery of Mor Gabriel, especially from the 12th century and upward, came from the same village of Bet Sabrino. Now, Felixino's and Torabdin. I will skip the activity of Felixinos outside Tor Abdin, mentioned in this memo. And I will mention only the part of the narration that is related to his presence in this region. The story tells us that his country is that of the East, Persia, darkened by the worship of images idols and fetishes as the memo mentions his parents however were upright and righteous fearing the lord for their good works he was born in a village by the name of tahil in the country called beth garmai a chesnoyo between two brackets felixinos had a biological brother named Mor Adai, a teacher in the village of Tahil. And because of the pagans' persecution against the Christians, the parents of Mor Achesnoyo left that country and settled in the blessed country of Tor Abdin near the village of Bet Sabrino. Now, when the little Achesnoyo, Mor Felixinos, grew up learning to distinguish between good and evil according to his story this memoir he parted from his family for a half mile built for himself a cell and lived in it for a particular time practicing ascetism 
One day, venerable monks living in some monastery of the Cardo Mountain visited the cell of Felixinus on their way to visit the monastery of Cartamine, a divine monastery founded by angels on the orders of the Lord, to pray there and be blessed by its relics and by the Holy Father who were famous there. Felixinus rejoiced when he saw them and went with them to the monastery of Cartamine, where they were blessed by the saints who dwelt there. Also, this memoir mentions that Felixinus decided to settle in the monastery and earn salvation by living a hard monastic life. There, he studied the doctrine and became very knowledgeable in Greek and Syriac. He became a master in the two schools of this monastery and a famous knowledgeable man of his time. He took the monastic habit and lived an ascetic life by fasting all day and eating nothing but some dry bread in the evening. Then he decided to leave the monastery and move to the territory west of the Euphrates. On his way, he visited a monastery hermitage, hermitage located near Mediat in Torabdin at Morhobel, the stylite, solitary on his column next to Mediat. There, a miracle occurred. As they were looking for each other, to greet each other, suddenly the column lowered its top of the stone so Morhobe could thus greet his friend Felixinus. Felixinus continued his path to where the Lord directed his steps. After Felixinus had studied in the monastery of Tel Ada in Syria, consecrated the bishop for the city of Mabu, and fought against the heretics between two brackets, he was exiled by order of Emperor Justin. After five years, he died of suffocation. Soon after, when Mabu was at war, his nephew, also named Felixinus, brought his uncle's body to Turabdin, to the monastery of Kartmin, Mor Gabriel, where Felixinus had been raised and trained as a monk. The nephew buried his uncle's body in the cemetery of the monastery. His family members brought the head of Felixinus to Mediat, and they placed him in a shrine, in a church, built under his name and known until today as the Church of the Chosen One. Now, regarding the nephew of Felixinus, there this, are... Uh, yes. uh, let, let me just uh, say, so for all our viewers, if you have any questions, uh, you can put it in the comments on Facebook or YouTube, and uh, Abuna can answer those questions at the end, end of his presentation. Right, thank you. Go ahead, Abuna. Regarding the nephew of Felixinus, there are a few mentions of him in Syriac manuscript. For example, the Anaphora of Morphelixinus, Bishop of Mabur, known as Estabai, the nephew of Felixinus the Great, Morhesnoi, who lived during the time of the faithful king Zenun, according to manuscript described in the catalogue of the Mosque of Tor Abdin by Afram Barso. We have Morphelixinus the Great, and there is the mention of Morphelixinus his nephew. Also, another example from another manuscript says an anaphora composed by San Felixinus, who is the same Stabaya, nephew of the great Felixinus Bishop of Mabu. Other people say that his uncle is the one who composed it. I mean the one that the heretic suffocated. This is what another Syriac manuscript mentions about the nephew of Morphelixinus. Also, the memoir mentions that Felixinus' nephew set up a three memorial days for his uncle. December 10th, the day of his death, one month ago. February 18th, 
the day of his burial, and August 18th, the day of his consecrations as bishop. However, according to a Syriac liturgical manuscript, in Abdin, that contains a text so dedicated to more Felixinos, there is a mention that he was buried in the Holy Monastery of Cartamin and his memory was celebrated on the 1st of April, 18th of February, 18th of August, and 10th of December. But here we have a fourth feast day dedicated to Morphelixinos, not three. In the memoir, there are three sacred places related to Felixinos. First, the monastery of Cartamin, Mor Gabriel, where his body was kept. A church in Mediat, named after him, where his head was preserved. And the monastery of Mor Hobel, near Mediat, where his head was later kept. However, there are two other places designated to his name. The same monastery of Mor Hobel and Mor Abraham near Mediat. This monastery was known before the 16th century as the monastery of Mor Hobel, Mor Abraham, and Mor Felixinos. The names of the three saints are fixed and arranged in sequence supplemented by a brief introduction of each set. For example, in a Syriac manuscript dated to 1559, it says the following, the monastery of Morhobel the divine, Morabrohom the master of Morbarsom from the north, who was the head of the anchorite, and Morphelixinos, the metropolitan of Mabuch. In another manuscript dated to 1472 from the same region, Tor Abdin, there is the following statement: Dairod Mor Hobel Al Ohoyo, Omo Abraham Rabehd Mor Barsaum Garbioyo, Omor Felixinus Rabud Mabuch Mednah Mediat. The monastery of Mor Hobel, the divine, Mor Abraham, the master of Mor Barsaum from the north, and the great Mor Felixinus. Metropolitan of Nabu. And finally, another manuscript dated from 1478. It says, the holy monastery of the splendid Morhobe, the ascetic on a column who was blessed from Mor Axnoyo, Felixinos, and Mor Abraham from the high mountain, from the region of Malatya, the master of Mor Balsamo, the chosen one, and the holy and the pure Morphelixinos of Mabur, the city of priests. See, before the 16th century, this monastery, Morhobel and Mor Abraham, was named Morhobel, Mor Abraham, and Morphelixinos. But after the 17th century, the name of the monastery became only Morhobel, or Morhobel and Mor Abraham, or Mor Abraham. Another church was also dedicated to Morphelixinos Achesnoyo in the village of Besabrino. In a late 19th century survey report of Christian religious sites in Tor Abdin, which was published uh, recently in uh, Orients Christianos, inform, uh, journal informs us that among the churches of Besabrino, there is one church dedicated to more Koryakos, more Abraham, more Georgis, more Ozoel, more Yoreth, and more Achusnoyo, between two brackets, Felixinos. Now, we will do kind of comparison between the long and short version of the memory of Felixinos. If you remember at the beginning of our talk, I mentioned that there is a long memory about the life of Felixinos, and there is a short version. And if we compare both, this comparison reflects how the people in Tor Abdin saw Morphelixinos, 
and meant for their own life and their own community. The lengthy version highlights the monastic and ascetic conduct of Felixinus since his early youth. For example, saying staying up all the night chanting or prostrating a lot with tears flowing from his eyes in abundance while he is praying, or chanting to the Lord tirelessly, or living a life full of fasting and prayer or depriving himself of worldly sustenance and from pleasant food. It also mentions his body was weakened, but his soul was enlightened. He was burning with love to the Son of God. He became a pure dwelling temple for the Holy Spirit. On the other hand, the shortened version is much more moderate in this aspect. It only tells us that Achesnoyo, Felixinos, bought it from his parents, built for himself a shed of stones, where he lived for a certain time in peace and the service of God. Also, the extended version emphasizes the importance of the monastery of Mor Gabriel by highlighting the spiritual and ascetic life of the monks living there. The monastery is presented as a holy place of pilgrimage to which people come from far away to receive blessing from the living monks and the relics of the holy saints. The monastery, according to the extended version, is a place where miracles occur. This focus doesn't appear as much in the short version. In the short version, there is no role given to Felixinus' nephew in bringing the body of Felixinus to Tor Abdin. And there is no mention of the monastery of Cartamin, Mor Gabriel, as a place of burial. It mentions when the Arab on the seashore, the members of Mor Felixino's family took the head of sand and arrived at Tor Abdin. This is the short version. They built a church in a village called Mediat, and there they lay the body of Mor Oxnoyo Felixinos. Where's Mor Gabriel? There is no mention of Mor Gabriel. This is the short. The extended Original version is mainly related to the monastic and aesthetic life in the monastery of Kartamin. This is the background. This is the mentality of the author who composed the long original version. He was a man from monastery. He lived in a monastic community. And with, with this mentality, he composed the life of Felixinus. In contrast, the short version is a reformulation of the original text in response to a pastoral need in the town of Mediat. And its purpose is to educate the laity of the parish. So the ascetic monastic tone has been dramatically toned down. See, someone's writing from a monastic background, emphasizing on the monastic aspect in his life and from the other side the short version someone has the interest to educate the laity the student the laity of his parish he toned down the monastic tone of the long version now here when we read this homily we come to a question is the life of Felixinos in this memoir, written in Tor Abdin, remodeled after the life of Severus of Antioch? This is a question.
the memoir on Philoxenos and the life of Severus of Antioch, composed by Patriarch Kriakos of Tacrit and by George Bishop of the Tayoi. The narrative structure similarity when we put the memoir of Philoxenos and the life of Severus by these two authors, and we do comparison between both of them, we see that the narrative structure similarities are shown in Severus and Philoxenos, for example, joining the monastic life. Their fame abroad by wisdom and knowledge. Similarity in their nomination for the episcopate and the royal support for such a no nomination. The proceed procedure for summoning them from their monastery to be consecrated. In their reception and installation on the episcopal seat. In their preaching, teaching, and enumerating and detaining their writings. Similarity in their pastoral activity toward the public, in highlighting the death of Emperor Anastasius and the rule of Emperor Justin, in the change in religious policy and expulsion of church leaders, and at the end, similarity in their exile and struggle. It seems that the author of the memoir on Philixenos used what he had in his hand, where? In the library of Mor Gabriel, to construct his story about Philixenos. And among the manuscripts found in the monastery of Mor Gabriel, Cartamine, is the famous Syriac manuscript, which is located nowadays in the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago, shelf mark 12. 108, which contains the life of Severus composed by Kriakos of Tecrit and George Bishop of the Arab. In other words, among the most important manuscripts found in Mor Gabriel, which later ended up in Besabrino, was this big manuscript about the homily of Saint Jacob and also contains the life of Severus of, by, uh, uh, of Antioch by Kriakos of Tecrit and George. Bishop of the Tayoya. And it seems that the author who composed the life of Felixinos used that manuscript to construct the life of Felixinos according to the model of the life of Severus. Now, what's the historical background behind the memoir on Felixinos? Or let's say behind the cult of Philoxenos or the place of Philoxenos in Torabdia. What's the historical background? Now, the homily, if we read the homily, the homily gives importance to the village of Vesabrino, which is located about maybe 10 miles plus miles from the monastery of Mor Gabriel, east of Mor Gabriel. And always there is big connection between Besabrino and Mor Gabriel. The homily gives importance to the village of Besabrino and the monastery of Cartamin. It reflects rivalry or competition between Besabrino and Cartamin from one side and Mediat on the other side. For example, reading from this memoir, it says, O Felixinos, your hand is in Mediat. Your resting place is in the monastery, between two brackets, Mor Gabriel, and your dwelling was first in Bessabrino, where you lived. Of this blessed town of Mediat, of the sad monastery, and the famous and blessed Bessabrino, may the Lord remove all filthiness, wickedness, fornications, greed, drunkenness, lust, vanity, and fraud. And it shall be among them neither envious, nor resentful, nor disruptive, nor annoying, nor insulter, neither quarrelsome, nor mocker, nor slander, slanderer, nor stubborn, nor anything that causes sin and condemnations. 
but let their inhabitants be pure, clear, honest, and righteous people, fearing the Lord. May there be perfect charity and purity. May the Lord keep peace and clear happiness. And may we now sing your glory and your praise, illustrious martyr and heroic Morachus Norio. And of quote from the memo. Now, Beth Sabrino has a special relationship with Felixinos, scribes and teachers from the village of Beth Sabrino and the family of the famous priest Yeshua from Beth Sabrino dedicated liturgical compositions to Felixinos. For example, in the Fanquito Cedre of the Feasts and Memorials, a manuscript described by Barson in his Catalog of the Syriac Manuscript in Tor Abdin, page 29, a cedro for the night prayer dedicated to Felixinos Achesnoi was composed by monk Yeshua, the son of priest Eshai. Another cedro for the evening prayer dedicated more Felixinos was also composed by monk Yeshua, the son of priest Eshai from Sabrino. What is interesting here is that during the 15th century and onward, there were remarkable efforts by authors from Sabrino, and especially from the famous family priest Eshayo to collect or compose accounts about the sense of their churches. Among these narrations, one dedicated to Felixinos of Mabuk, which Afram Barson translated into Arabic and published in 1911, also comes from Ben Sabrino. Now, this collection of stories had become part of a local spiritual heritage in Torabdi, in that area, as they are remarkably similar in specific details and aspect. We see this. Uh, uh, similar aspect and details, for example, in the story of Mordodo, a famous saint from Bessabrino. The same element we see it in the story of Mor Achesnoio Felixinos, written in Bessabrino or by someone from Bessabrino. In addition to the spiritual dimension and religious values, these stories, a geographical genre, including those related to Felixinos, express the sense social and economical setting and the material or moral gains they involve. Now, owning the relics of a saint or part of his body gives a group or village a privilege and honor over the rest of the villages, attracting spiritual and worldly power. Therefore, it is not strange sometimes for a bloody conflict to occur between villages in the dispute over the relics of sand. As happened with a group of monks, for example, a group of monks from the monastery found near the city of Hassan Kifu. On the one hand, and the monks of the monastery of San Gabriel, when the first one stole the body of San Gabriel, resulting in one dead person and some wounded. This violent event about obtaining or burying the relics were repeated in the stories of Mordodo. Here we have the village of Vesabrino against the village of Isfis. The story of Shamaun Manamoyo and Bishop Raskalla. Here we have the village of Vesabrino against the village of Arbo. And the story of Felixinos himself. Here we see the village of Vesabrino against the town of Mediat. If you uh, uh, here at this page that you see, there is long historical notice about how the body of Felixinos was brought from Mambesh Din to be buried in the monastery of Mor Gabriel, but they had to pass through Mediat, and the people of Mediat wanted the relics, the body of more Felixinos, to be buried in their village. And the people of Sabrina, they got angry, and they start to fight with each other, resulting with few dead people. Then, 
Saint Hobel, who was living on a high column near the village, heard about that conflict. He left his column and he went to the village and he made peace between the people of Bessabrino and Mediat. And then at the end, there was an agreement that the head of Morphelixinos will be left in Mediat and they will be build the church for him while the body will be transported into the monastery of Mor Gabriel. The same story we'll see it in Mordodo or Mor Shamon Manamoyo. It's part of the spiritual heritage, local heritage in Tor Abdi. Now, there is a reason Bess Sabrino was called Bess Sabrino Emodudino in Syriac. We say Bess Sabrino Emodudino means translation in English Bess Sabrino is the mother of religion to express their zeal of building so much churches. This fame dates to 900 years ago when two thirds of Betsabrino's population who were Christian bought the houses and lands of the Muslim population of Betsabrino, who were one third of the total population. These Muslims were asked to leave the village, and they did, in order not to allow Muslims to return to Bessabrino or the nearby village of Easter. Rabbi Shem'on, the son of the leader Thomas, said to his father, "It would be very good if you give me a hundred loads of wine and a hundred household, and I shall go." and live in that ruined village called Easter. For I know that before long they, between two brackets the Muslim, will regret what they have done and will come back and live in that ruin of Easter, right next to our vineyard. And instead of reaping the benefit, we shall have bitter wound and loss. And every day they will inflict suffering on us. And of course, the Muslims sent messengers to negotiate their return to live in the mentioned ruined village, Easter. They came and found Rabban Shamhuns built a few houses in Easter, and they asked him if they might come and live with him. But he rejected their request. After the Muslim had left, Rabban Shamhun came back to the village of Besabrino. He and those who had gone with him began to tear down the mosque of the Muslims and their minaret. Extensive building effort of churches, so much churches, so much monastery, towers, courtyard, fortress, cemeteries, dwelling places for the sister nuns and caravansaries followed these actions. Now, what is happening here? What the meaning of this extensive building of churches and monasteries? It is a process of claiming every inch of land by imprinting a religious social identity on it. In other words, it's a policy of Christianizing. Now, to back up such a process, process of extensively building sacred places and reviving ruined sites, was the need also to associate every site with symbols, legends, stories, miracles, heroic acts, significant events, and religious feelings. In other words, there was a need to collect and use hagiographical literature of sand stories related to the sacred landscape. Why? Because this would strengthen the bond between the local community and their environment and ensure a popular collective memory attached to the land for generations. And the story or the homily on Felixinos was composed within this process, need and context. Conclusion. In conclusion, after reviewing the homily on Felixinos, and more sources in the form of colophons and historical notices about Felixinos, it becomes clear 
that besides Felixino's legacy as a prominent theologian, who lived in a very critical period of dogmatic conflict, his image also integrated with people of life, concerns, and interests by becoming a device employed to gain their heart and mind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Obuna. It was a very interesting lecture. Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's very interesting that not interesting. It's very, I, mean, I can't imagine today people fighting <laughs> to, for the bodies of saints. Uh, but yeah, uh, th that shows us that uh, how much they value uh, having relics uh, in their city. Um, I mean, today, a lot of people don't believe that uh, relics have any power or they don't believe that, um, yeah, that, yeah they, that they don't have any power and that they mean anything because, uh, I mean, we see even in the Bible that uh, objects and uh, bodies of saints are performing miracles. But uh, yeah, in the modern world, it's it's difficult for people to accept that. But uh, and this reflects their strong faith. Yes, exactly. Very strong yeah. faith. And Felixinos had very special place in their life. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so let's see. Do I have any questions? Uh, so here's one question by uh, Malfono Gabriel Rabo. Um, he says, thank you very much, Abun Kashisho Sharbel, for this lecture on an important church father of the Syrian church. Have you found any indication that Morphilaxinos mentions the monastery of Mor Gabriel in his works? Such references would be important evidence that he stayed at the monastery of Mor Gabriel. Uh, all right. Uh, there in, in uh, Memro, in the same memoir, there is mention of a letter correspondence between Felixinos and bishop named Yohanan of Amid. He was the bishop of the city of Amid. Yohanan was from the monastery of Mor Gabriel, and in this and in this mention in the memoir, we don't have the letter. The letter didn't survive. But we have the mention of that letter. Felixinos greed his friend and he reminds him or he recalled the memory that they had as a friend in the monastery of Kartamin. Now, this mention, according to a letter correspondence between Felixinos and Yohanun of Amid from Mor Gabriel, but that letter didn't survive means it's indirect mention and this is one of the indications that makes us believe or think or believe or that Felixinos really lived in the monastery of Mor Gabriel or visited the monastery of Mor Gabriel. Mm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's an important uh, evidence for that. So it provides some justification for this tradition also. All right. Yeah. Taudi Malfono Gabriel. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you, Malfono. Uh, I, I had a question about, uh, so in hagiography in, in general, uh, so we see that this, this Mimro is composed like almost a thousand years after he, he Morphilexinos passed away. Should we think that this story is like uh, an oral tradition that's being remembered? Or, I mean, you said there were documents in Mor Gabriel also, which were referenced for uh, the composition of this memoir. So what should we think? Like, is this a true story or is it something that is just composed because it's useful for like social integration or something? Now, the memoir of the homily, the memoir of the life of on the on Felixinos of Mabul belongs to a genre, to a kind of literature called hagiography, which means mm -hmm. the life of saints. 
Now the life of sands <clears throat> based on historical facts. Mm -hmm. Now, is there kind of sometimes kind of exaggeration? Yes. Sometimes there is kind of a pattern copied from different life sense? Yes. But is there a truth there? Of course, yes, because they are built on the historical nucleus. There is historical background, there is historical uh, truth behind that story. Mm -hmm. For example, now when the memory of Felixinus was composed, we don't know. The Halo proposed the 13th century. I doubt that, but I don't have a strong evidence. I think it was composed between the 17th, 18th, 17th century. Because, for example, in the short version, it mentions that Felixino sent a letter to Gharzan, to the region of Gharzan. Now, in Syriac, we don't say Gharzan. Gharzan, in Syriac, Arzun. Before the 16th century, in Syriac sources, it will mention Arzun, the province of Arzun. From the 19th, 18th, 19th uh, century, we'll mention Gharzan means the fact it mentions as Gharzan, it means it was written recent, mm. uh, later. Another example, the Monastery of Morhobe, in the short version it mentions, and in the long version, the Monastery of Morhobe, Morhobe Morabrohom and Morphilixinos. If an author writing in the 13th, 14th century will mention that monastery, will mention it most probably, it means should be logically as monastery of Morhobel, Mor Abraham, and Mor Felixinos. But he mm. mentioned only as Mor Hobel. Mm. I think because he was living in the 17th century when nobody remembered or mentioned anymore Mor Felixinos as the patron of that monastery. But what was mentioned in this memoir goes much earlier than that? Yes. If we go to colophons, historical notices in the 12th century, 10th century, 11th century, even the 8th century, uh, 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 9th century, like the Chronicle of Cartamine 819, we see pieces from the life of Felixinos that later were found in his memoir. Mm. Yeah. If you deconstruct the memoir, you can find pieces of information about his life in yeah. much earlier sources. Mm. 12, 13, even 9th century. Yeah. <laughs> Means the nucleus of his life is the truth. Mm. Okay. As yeah. it was from the memoir. Right. Right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. Um, do you, do you think that uh, this like hagiographical tradition still continues today? Uh, means the interest of a studying, a studying. I mean, it? just just writing the stories of saints. Like this is after, like, if you're saying like a thousand years later, people are writing stories, so uh, even today. Uh, yeah. yeah, of course. Means means uh, means. Uh, it is part of the popular piety, the popular veneration also. Mm. Is, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure, of course. And mm. it will continue. It will yeah, continue. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's more important that uh, such stories exist so that uh, people... Because, will, right. yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, it's because it's not just about the religious aspect. Yes. Sometimes you will insert nationalistic elements in the life of a saint. Sometimes you will insert social interest, social conflict mm. in the life of a saint. Sometimes you will insert ecclesiastical conflict in the life of a saint. Means the author will use the hagiography, the text, 
not only for a spiritual purpose, but as the vice. The life of a saint is a device composed to address certain concerns and to communicate certain listeners. Mm. There is a message there. And not right. necessarily always only about religious spiritual motif. Could be different. Now to give a strength to your communication, to your message through this device, the life of a saint. Means, means it is a good device, let's say. Yeah, yeah very true. In order to yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, this is the church history. There is the mm -hmm. spiritual aspect since the beginning. There is the spiritual, the theological, the spiritual, the divine, the unseen, and there is the human, uh, the human uh, reality. Yeah. The human reality. You know? mm -hmm. We can't deny that. Sometimes we will mention certain church father and we will focus so much about their spiritual, ascetic, monastic, theological writings. But sometimes also it is good to understand how the everyday life community from the everyday life aspect so that interacted with such things yeah right, right. we have yeah. to see it from both sides right right yeah i don't think we have a lot i mean people didn't write in that sense right when they think about preserving uh things they they'll only keep the important parts of it so everyday life is not so much recorded right. Right. we have to see it from different angles yeah right okay yeah some people we have interested to learn. yes yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So we have one more question. I think we can take this one and then uh, we can end after this. So it says, Taudi Sagi Abuna for this very interesting sharing. Was there any evidence of correspondence between Morphiloxinos of Mabug and the Alexandrian church? Means as, as, as far as I, 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 I don't know. Means I, mm. means I can't answer this answer okay yeah yeah i i i don't know yeah okay yeah I'm, that's yeah. Right. yeah i mean that's not your uh, area of specialty uh or i i would like to look for that <laughs> but i i can't answer that question I, okay, I okay. Know if there is you know maybe but yeah can okay. try. i don't know okay all right Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Abuna. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for our whole, for everybody attending. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Um, and we hope to see you again with another lecture someday. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and God bless you. Have a happy 2024. Um, yeah, thank you.